bit of prayer. Uh, anyone, who, if you can please lead in prayer, that will be good to open up our session for today. Yes. Uh, uh, Heavenly Father. Uh, yes, Elijah, go ahead. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to give you praise and thanks this morning for this moment of our lives. We pray, commit our class to you, O oh God. We commit every student and our facilitator into your care. We pray for wisdom, understanding, knowledge, that it, as we are about to engage, let your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, take absolute control and lead us and guide us into the truth and knowledge of you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Elisha. Uh, and uh, welcome once again, everybody. Uh, this is the course on prayer and intercession. Uh, we will understand various aspects of uh, prayer and intercession. The intention is to uh, learn what scriptures have to tell us, but at the same time to develop our own personal prayer lives. So um, it's uh, both from an academic perspective and from a spiritual development perspective, uh, a very, very important uh, subject for us to consider. And uh, I'm sure everyone will agree that prayer is uh, so foundational uh, for our relationship with God. So uh, before we go any further, just want to let us know that I have posted the course notes and the course overview on the classwork page of Google Meet. So if you um, look at that, if you can open it right now, you can download the notes and I will uh, try and go in order as much as possible. So you can look at it and also, you know, I will be uh, sharing from there. So that will be, uh, you know, like a, a, a reiteration of what is given in the notes for you. Uh, so I would encourage that you have your notes open with you uh, as we go through this course. Okay, so please download it if you haven't already. All right, uh, so let's start off uh, by understanding uh, what prayer is. So uh, what is prayer after all? Uh, any thoughts uh, from, from you? What do you think prayer is? Just feel free, you can unmute. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, Rosalind, could you come again, please? It's talking to God. Okay, wonderful. Talking to God. Okay, that is prayer. That is prayer. What else is prayer? Okay, uh, yes, uh, uh, Abu Bakr, could you, you, you can go ahead and share, please. You can unmute yourself. Please go ahead. Uh, all right, I'm not sure if you heard me. I can see a raised hand, so you can speak, please. Abu Bakr and um, uh, John Paul says communication, communion with God. Rebecca says prayer is a request to God. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, prayer is all this and uh, uh, you know much more and we will try and understand that as we go along uh, yeah, prayer is warfare okay silly Toli says prayer is warfare that's great uh, okay uh, Rosalind says relationship with God Okay, that's great. That's great. Sitkenu, prayer is communication of a child to his father. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Sitkenu. Anita says prayer is our relationship with God. Okay, wow. 
awesome awesome so uh, yes we have uh, understanding about prayer uh, in in this manner we will expand our understanding from here so yes prayer is all this uh, prayer is uh, what we use to connect to god to relate with god uh, and if i can use the term commune okay commune with god now is uh, fellowship okay it's it's fellowship so when we commune with god what happens is we are sharing our hearts so some of you said that prayer is speaking to god that's true uh, but in communion or in fellowship what also happens is god speaks back to us okay so we speak to god god speaks to us and when uh, this kind of interaction happens uh, between people you know you you exchange your thoughts you exchange your uh, uh vision uh, about things you exchange your purpose right and uh, we can also say that as we continue speaking with god and communing with god there is a divine exchange which we can expect to see and what is this divine exchange this divine exchange is uh, that that we begin to um relate to we begin to or our lives and uh, live out the kind of life that god wants us to live so yes we are speaking to god when we are praying you know we tell him what is on our hearts but at the same time god communicates back to us us to our hearts in our right and he ensures that uh, we we understand his purposes uh, to god it is speaking but it is communion with god it is a two way connection with god uh, which brings about an exchange right it brings about an exchange uh, and draws us closer to god now that uh, in uh, uh, you know in the at the outset that is like a very simple understanding of prayer that we can get but as we, we will also notice that prayer helps us partner with god and i will talk a little more on that today itself a prayer helps us partner with god okay thank you uh, divya uh, so divya is saying that uh, i'm freezing in between uh, i hope uh, the image is fine now divya yeah yeah but uh, in between yeah it just uh, gets interrupted okay so i have another connection internet connection i'll try and put it on i'm just worried that uh, it shouldn't get disconnected so if it happens don't worry i i will log back in so let me try yeah it's yeah. a better connection yeah thank you yeah yeah can you still see me divya is that okay yeah okay? yes you okay, can great great uh, yeah right. let's hope this this connection is stronger thank you yes so uh yeah we started out uh by saying that prayer is communion and i said additionally in scripture we see that through prayer we can partner with god okay there are uh, many things on the heart of god um uh, that he wants accomplished here on the face of the earth and how does god actually go about doing those things uh, god wants us to agree with him in prayer right and when we agree with him in prayer we are exercising our authority and we are able to partner with god in accomplishing his purposes on the face of the earth so prayer is communion with god but prayer is also partnership with god to execute his purposes here on earth now prayer is also a ministry ministry is nothing but service now if we want to serve others one thing that we can do is pray for them why because when we pray uh, 
as i told you we are partnering with god to execute his purposes so that execution takes place we stand in agreement uh, to god's word for that person's life and the blessings of god the deliverance of god you know, the healing of god the um, uh, understanding and wisdom that person needs whatever it is that the other individual needs you know that is released to that person as we pray for them so it is actually a service or a ministry that we are rendering to them so prayer uh, can also be uh, a medium through which we can bless others uh, particularly our brothers and sisters in christ now prayer uh, in addition to all this is also warfare okay uh, we see in ephesians 6 when paul talks about the armor uh, of uh, god he describes various parts and towards the end you know he says uh, that pray for everyone with all kinds of prayers okay so uh, when we are standing up against the enemy that is satan uh, who wants to bring destruction into our lives uh, we can also use this weapon of prayer so prayer is warfare uh, we are protected when we pray and we can also uh, destroy whatever it is that the enemy is planning against us so prayer can be used as warfare so overall as you consider prayer you know prayer is a uh, very very powerful okay god did not just institute prayer uh, and say okay um uh, yeah that there, there is this medium through which you can communicate with me and that's about it no but it is a very very powerful uh, uh, foundation for our relationship and a glorious life here on earth and uh, uh, the word of in the word of god we see that so many people of god you know they engaged in prayer they poured out their hearts to god because our god is a prayer answering god you know he never institutes something and says that um, uh i will not take notice of it not at all but because he has instituted prayer we can be sure that god is also a god who hears prayer so there is a scripture in um, psalms psalm 65 and verse 2 it's in your notes if you have it open with you and it is on page number 4 <coughs> excuse me I request one of us to please go ahead and read that, and also the next scripture there, First Peter chapter three and verse twelve. Please, anybody, you can unmute yourself and read both the scriptures. Psalm sixty-five two, O yes. you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. One Peter three twelve, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Mm, thank you thank you uh, selitoli for reading those uh, scriptures uh, and here we see that god is a prayer answering god and which is why we can go confidently into his presence to um, seek whatever it is that we need uh, and also we uh, read in these verses that god eyes are turned towards the righteous and he is listen to us uh, and you know we we can um, continue to strengthen our relationship with god through prayer pour out everything that is uh, uh, upon our hearts uh, and uh, you know relate relate to him in a stronger way through prayer so that is uh, uh, in a sense some of the key uh things that we understand about prayer okay so we will go ahead and look at the purpose of prayer but before i go uh, further uh, i just like to pause and ask if there are any additional thoughts or comments from your side based on what you heard just now
prayer is communion prayer is uh, um, executing partnering with god to execute his purposes uh, prayer is uh, warfare so you have any uh, comments on that yes yes devya please go ahead yeah i was just um, uh, like the point that says prayer is partnering with god um so um is it is god dependent upon our prayers that's that's one thing that came to my mind for execution of his plans on earth um, yes yes yeah in that case yeah if we are not you know going according to the that will of god so am i limiting uh, you know what god wants to do uh yes divya and uh, i will explain further in fact uh, the explanation is coming up in today's uh, session itself okay so please hold on yes god is okay. dependent okay. on prayers yeah thank you yeah thank I you thank you first yes uh, thank you divya abu bakar you have a question uh you may either uh speak uh, unmute yourself and speak or if you are more comfortable putting it in the chat then uh, you could please do that and i will take up that question soon so it's great uh, that you know we are all thinking about prayer and the and um, what prayer really is so let me uh, continue and maybe we'll come back to more questions and answers towards the end of our session uh here in chapter 2 the purpose of prayer uh, is explained to us so what we see here is that god when he created man on the face of the earth he created him in his own image okay and in the image of god when god created man uh he also gave him dominion and authority you see that in uh, genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 okay and i think it will be helpful if somebody reads that passage as well so uh, anyone if you can quickly turn to genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 good uh, scriptures to meditate then then god said let us make man in our image in our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air over the livestock over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them thank you yes thank you thank you rosalyn so uh, as we heard that passage uh, we saw that god gave dominion and authority to man okay on on uh, uh, various creatures so god intended for us to rule and reign here on the earth right so he wanted us to subdue uh, and uh, in this passage you uh, note that there is creation you know that is given un- as a uh, Uh, give, given to be subjected to man and god really wanted for man to have dominion over all these things now as we continue on in uh, the word of god in uh, psalm 115 and verse 16 now we see that god gave the earth to man but uh, like the heavens belong to him so in other words what god is saying is that the execution of his purposes here on the earth okay to re, uh, and the dominion that he wants exercised here on the earth he is expecting man to do it because he has vested man with that authority and he has vested man with that dominion so that is the original intention of god to have man here on the earth and for man to rule and reign okay whatever so happened so we realize for a no came came back of the disobedience of man okay? when what happened the world was corrupted with sin uh, and we don't really see anything written about uh, the dominion uh, from that point on shifting over to to another person 
Uh, but when you read about uh, the temptation of Jesus in Luke chapter 4, you will notice you know, Satan uh, tries to entice the Lord Jesus. Okay? And he says things like uh, <clears throat> this whole, uh, everything belongs to me. Okay, the kingdoms of the world, they belong to me. Uh, I can give it to you if you only bow down and worship me. But uh, in this account, you know, it makes you think, how is it that Satan can say that the kingdoms of the world belong to him when God actually created man uh, with dominion and authority over the world in the original state? Right? But we know that because of the fall, there was a shifting of authority that took place. No wonder Satan now uh, had this open door to interfere with the things of the world. Right? And uh, uh, he was actually doing things. Uh, and that is the point when the authority which we lost to Satan was given back to us, which was restored back to us. So this is this is how we understand, uh, you know, the the um, deputization of of man here on the earth. You know, God entrusted him with authority, but because of sin, we now need to exercise that authority. We will talk about the fact that prayer is one of those ways in which we can exercise this authority that God has given us. You know, John Wesley made a, a, a very, uh, uh, you know, pertinent statement. And he says, God does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer. Okay. Uh, for some of us, that might be hard to digest, to think that, oh, uh, God is sovereign. How is it that we are saying uh, that God works on the basis of our prayers? But it is true. Okay, And I, I will tell you how. I will tell you how it is true. So there are many things here on the earth that God will not do unless we pray okay so just a pointer right here uh, uh, for for those of us who are finding it hard to uh, receive see there is the master plan of god and in that master plan you know, there are certain um, aspects which cannot be changed for example you now we have uh, the creation of the world uh, and then we had the plan of redemption the bible says the lamb of god was slain before the foundation of the world okay so the lord jesus and his sacrifice sacrifice was planned before the foundation of the world now if we were to pray and ask god uh, not to send the lord jesus it wouldn't work because these are the grand plans of God which cannot be changed. So there are certain uh, purposes of God which no matter how much we pray, it cannot change it. But then there are the other purposes of God where we are equally uh, uh, you know, included as partners. And unless we exercise our authority, we will not see breakthroughs. We will not see uh, uh, the execution of those purposes here on the face of the earth. Okay, so that's just a small explanation for us uh, at this point. But we will continue to talk about the sovereignty of God and uh, God's dependence on the prayer of man as we go along. So, okay, so far we've understood that God gave man authority uh, and God restored back that authority through the Lord Jesus. Uh, now, God declares his purposes okay and all of scripture is that god has declared uh, his purposes and he wants to see those purposes fulfilled okay uh, what is the role of prayer in this what is the role of prayer in this one very good example is the life of elijah and we will uh, look at the life of elijah uh, so i would like to request uh, one of us to please read from first kings chapter 17 uh, verses 1 and 2 please so one person can read that passage then uh, we can have another person read from first kings 18 
verses 1 and 2 and then uh, verses 39 through 46 i will i will post it for us here in the chat so anybody please take it up and pray uh, i mean first read king, it yeah first king chapter 17 1 and 2 now elijah the tishbite from tishbe in gilead said to ahab as the lord the god of israel lives whom i serve there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word then the word of the lord came to elijah leave here turn eastward and hide in the kerith ravine east of the jordan okay thank you thank you uh, roslyn there's another passage that we would need to read this is first kings 18 i posted it somebody could you please pick that up and read please Now it happened after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, "Go show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the face of the earth." So Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. Was thirty nine. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said. The Lord he is God the Lord he is God Then Elijah said to them Cease the prophets of Baal do not let one of them escape So they ceased them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there Now Elijah said to Ahab Go up eat and drink for there is a sound of the roar of a heavy shower So Ahab went up to eat and drink but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he crouched down on the earth and put his face between his knees he said to his servant go up now look toward the sea so he went up and looked at looked and said there is nothing and he said go back seven times he it came about at the seventh time that he said behold a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea and he said go up say to ahab prepare your chariot and go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you in the light, in, in a little while the sky grew black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy shower and ahab rode and went to jesreel then the hand of the lord was on elijah and he girded up his loins and outran ahab to jesreel Mm, thank you thank you john for reading these passages uh all right so let me uh quickly explain them to us what he says right so he knows the word of the lord and he also says uh, it will not come unless it uh, it you know first comes from what i say and why pronounce so uh, elijah hears the word of god uh, and uh, in, he goes and he announces it to ahab also he tells king ahab that is going to rain now the next thing we see somebody uh, as we would want to term elijah as a very powerful prophet isn't it because we uh, uh, notice miracles in his ministry and in his life so even a powerful prophet like elijah uh, we saw in first kings chapter 18 the the last portion there that he goes and he begins to pray and he prays seven times he prays seven times now it is uh, uh that he knows he knows a uh, for fact that it is going to rain now having known that uh, should elijah have just uh, uh, you know uh, stretched his feet and taken a nap maybe and thought okay fine it is going to happen so there is nothing that i need to do but what do you see that do here he goes and he prays seven times for something that he already knows is going to happen okay that truly tells us that elijah understood that there is a part for us as people as human beings to play in the purposes of god through our prayer 
So what if Elijah did not pray? From what we have seen, it may be safe to say that it may not have rained. Okay. Yes, can God cause it to rain? He can. Did God intend for it to rain? He did. Did Elijah know about it? Yes. But Elijah had to do his part of praying. And that's why you know, we uh, said that prayer is also partnering with God in executing the purposes of God here on earth. So in a way, though it may not sound very right, we could say that God depended on the prayers of Elijah. Okay. Now, if we read verse 5 uh, uh, from you know, verses uh, 16 through 18 over there, it tells us Elijah, a man like us, he prayed that it should not rain and did not rain. He prayed that it should rain and it rained. Right? So it, it, that passage encourages us in James. It says that the prayers of a righteous man are effective. If a human being, a man just like us, only refers to the human nature, given the authority of God, if Elijah could, could release that authority through his prayer and things happened, we are told that the prayers of a righteous person Okay, and we have been made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ, that our prayers are very, very effective, that God uh, will work together with us to accomplish his purposes. Okay, and that is the kind of authority we carry uh, and, and we see in Elijah's example that Elijah was using that dominion and authority and he saw uh, it rain. Uh, just as he had prophesied earlier. And similarly, if you look at the life of Daniel, uh, uh, this example is also given in our notes here, but I won't uh, get us to read. I'm on page number five. I won't get us to read all the scriptures here. But essentially what we see here is that Daniel understood uh, through uh, you know the prophecies made earlier that there was a time for the children of God to be set free from their captivity. So uh, uh, knowing the timeline, Daniel seeks God. Knowing the timeline, Daniel prays to God. And he says, God, you know, you have spoken that your people will be free uh, after these many years of captivity. That time is soon approaching. So, you know, I'm just praying into it. And, and I ask that it would be done, that it will be accomplished. So we have people like Elijah. We have people like Daniel who were engaging in prayer, knowing the authority which God had uh, vested upon human beings. So today, uh, what I want us to awaken to is the fact that, yes, you know, prayer is communion with God. Prayer is us sharing our hearts with God and enjoying the presence of God. But there is also uh, a purpose in executing the purposes of God here on the earth. And we have been given uh, that authority and dominion. And one of the ways in which we can release it is through prayer. And uh, we must do that. Now, uh, as God's people, now there are several other scriptures that encourage us. Uh, in, in Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, we uh, read that, that we are children of God. We are sons and daughters. We are co-heirs. Right? We are co-heirs with Christ. And co-heirs with Christ, uh, again, puts the focus on the privileges that we have as his children. And we can use those privileges uh, through prayer. So as God's people, as the church, you know, we must never forget the, the fact that you know, we are in a powerful position. We are in a very powerful position because we can exercise our authority. We are co-heirs 
with Christ. Uh, and we've also been told that we have the power of the name of Jesus. Remember, Jesus uh, told us that when we pray in his name, that our prayers would be answered. So he has given us, in a sense, that power of attorney when we use the mighty name of Jesus uh, in our prayers and things are accomplished. Okay. And we've also been given the keys of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said that. He said that I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So uh, what has he done for us to be such a powerful entity, for the church to be such a powerful entity? He has given us the keys of the kingdom. Keys represent authority. You know, Anyone who has the keys to my house can enter, can have access to everything in my house okay so keys represent authority and uh, jesus said that he is giving the church or his people you and i the keys of the kingdom meaning access power dominion which we can use in our uh, prayer life and in various other ways to establish the kingdom of god so uh, in this you know, we see that we as, as God's people can partner together with him uh, and uh, see very many things accomplished. So just want to uh, pause here uh, and share a small, uh, uh, it's not testimony, but uh, uh, it's more like what happened. So you are aware that we have just come through the second wave here in India and the second wave of COVID was uh, quite... Um, you know, it, it was really scary because uh, we we saw people getting very sick. The mortality rate was high uh, and, and so many things happened uh, in our nation. Uh, and during that period, as a church family here at APC, um, uh, Pastor Ashish had called for a prayer uh, for 40 days. And we would meet on Zoom every morning at 6 a.m. Uh, to just pray for the needs of people, particularly COVID related uh, issues uh, and uh, names of people would get posted on the chat. Uh, then, uh, you know, concerns would get posted on the chat. So 40 days, 40 days of just praying, praying over people. And uh, on the call, you would have, uh, you know, people ranging from, I don't know, maybe 70 to 100 people joining the call every day, early morning, six o'clock. Uh, and uh, uh, as I was observing, you know, what was going on over the 40 days, we saw so many answers to prayer. We saw, uh, you know, people who were critical uh, in the ICUs. Uh, eventually, we would have messages on the chat which said that now they're doing better. You know, they are recovering. Uh, so all kinds of testimonies uh, that, that we could see. Um, and uh, uh, all of this because God's people were engaging in prayer. So every morning here we were, uh, you know, uh, calling upon the Lord and, you know, we, we were standing on the word of God, God's word of protection, God's word of uh, healing through the finished work of the cross, uh, right? Uh, so we were here praying for the people, uh, praying for our families, praying for the nation, okay? And uh, uh, I could really sense God moving uh, in a powerful way through those 40 days of prayer. Now, what if we did not, in what if we did not, Pray. What if we did not minister or serve through prayer? Uh, honestly, I really don't know what would have happened. Uh, uh, one thing I know, those prayers had an impact. Okay. And uh, praise God that uh, it was possible despite it physically, but it's online. It is important for us to execute God's purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, there's a little bit of a connection issue there, but uh, no problem. All right, so now we will move on to uh, the question that Divya raised about uh, uh, God's self sufficiency and his dependence on our prayers. Okay, so as uh, I shared earlier, um, prayer is God's design. 
okay and whenever something is god's design god um is in favor of that and no wonder the scriptures we began with we said that god hears our prayers right and <coughs> excuse me his ears are turned to press for us to seek him okay so there are a couple of scriptures here you don't have to read it i'll just uh, you know no share the essence uh jeremiah 29 12 it says and god said i will listen to you you seek me you will find me right so the design of prayer is from god it's not something that man stumbled on or you know man came up with it uh, somewhere along the journey not at all god was the one who instituted prayer and he at every point encouraged his people to pray and seek him with prayer so this must help us understand that prayer is so important when something is really important uh generally you know you you uh, look at the life of jesus and you um uh, it in your mind that oh man this Jesus himself taught on prayer right remember the Lord's prayer where he teaches the people and says in this manner pray and we will see about the life of Jesus and how he is our role model for prayer but we observe that Jesus took a lot of time in prayer he taught about prayer right he taught about persevering in prayer so if Jesus gives this kind of importance to prayer definitely you know there is something about partnering with this sovereign god who is actually able to do everything but still there is a role for prayer to play for that purpose to be accomplished and no wonder in fact even before jesus goes and selects his disciples will read the whole night he prayed okay so there is something of prayer right in following the purposes of god in releasing the purposes of god god can do it without us but he has chosen to have us engage as partners so god is looking for someone now ezekiel 22 uh, <clears throat> it's mostly uh, i mean it must be familiar for many of us where we see that uh, god says i'm looking for one man to stand in the gap okay ezekiel 22 was i'm looking for one man to stand in the gap and i found no one so at least one person to stand in the gap and jeremiah writes uh, <clears throat> and what god says is if i get one person to agree in prayer then he is actually able to and in this case you know to to uh um, save the people from from wrath collectively if you all uh, understand the authority that we have and we engage in prayer uh, what all mighty things we can accomplish and you know uh, how we can serve uh, our nation how we can serve the nations of the world so there is uh, an incredible mandate out there in prayer and god has chosen right god has chosen to need us uh, uh, in and through prayer and that is how he has designed it okay uh, and, and which is why uh, divya uh, just making that point for you once again that god is dependent okay on our prayers uh, is, is that uh, are you okay with it or any thoughts yeah yeah i'm pretty clear yeah 
Yes, Pastor. Okay, okay, yes. Yeah, thank you, Divya. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, for now we have understood, you know, quite clearly that God has chosen to need us. And, and there are times when, uh, you know, we, we can... Uh, stand in the gap for others in fact there is a time when job you know he going through a lot of uh, difficulties in his personal life but you know he he cries out to god and he says god if only there was one person uh, who could pray for me job 9 verses 32 and 33 for he is not a man as i am that i may answer him and that we should go to court together nor is there any mediator uh, between us who may lay his hand on us both okay and uh, job 16 verse 21 uh, follow up to that he says oh that one might plead for a man with god as a man pleads for his neighbor so basically what job is saying is he's saying that look uh, god is too powerful uh, and uh, you know it's like I'm not even worthy to go into his presence and I'm going through this very difficult time and I just wish there was somebody who can stand on my behalf to plead my case, right? So he is looking for an intercessor. God is looking for intercessors to execute his purposes. People who are in need and many times. You know, there can be people who are uh, uh, very sick. There can be people People in some sort of an option come out of people and I will for some reason. But you know, when we pray, we are able to exercise our authority on their behalf and we can see the purpose of God uh, accomplished in lives. Now, one more reason why we should pray. One uh, God He wants us to partner. There are people in need uh, who we can bless through our prayers. We must also pray because you know God rewards us. Remember, Jesus said, uh, "If you go and pray in secret, I will reward you in open." So, uh, for, for us, we may think, "What what is the use of prayer?" And prayer, anyway, doesn't get recognized by everyone unless you know, like the fans, you stand in front of everyone and uh, you pray for them. But God says, uh, "Prayer is not about." getting noticed when we pray we are noticed by God. and god has a reward for it so that must also encourage us to pray and if we do not pray you no know, we are truly missing out on uh, we are missing out on our fellowship with god we are missing out on uh, uh, exercising our authority here on the earth we are missing out on blessing those who may be in need uh, of our prayers and we are missing out on the blessings and the rewards that god has for those who are willing to pray in secret right so that overall is uh, uh, our content for today so i'm just gonna uh, pause right now uh, and uh, we will go ahead and take up uh, some of uh, the questions that have come in so far uh abu Baker had a question so okay uh, so abu says uh, you said prayer is a ministry uh why prayer is not among five-fold ministry according to ephesians okay. uh, <laughs> uh abu Baker, uh, there are various kinds of things. So, Ephesians 4 talks about the Lord Jesus uh, giving the gift of the fivefold ministry and the fivefold ministry offices. Passages like Romans 12. Okay, you will find a lot of ministries listed there. And they are not necessarily the fivefold ministry uh, offices. For example, in the fivefold ministry, you have a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, a prophet, an apostle. Uh, but other ministries 
that you would notice in Romans 12 is things like administration, things like leadership, okay, things like uh, uh, service. Okay, so well, the point I'm trying to make is there are many ministries to serve God's people and the kingdom of God. Now, we don't necessarily have everything listed in scripture. Okay, uh, and, and similarly, uh, prayer may not have been included in the fivefold ministry offices, but it certainly is a ministry, and we can serve with through that you know, serve people through prayer. Okay, I hope uh, it answers your question, Abu Baker. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, there's another question here by Ruben. And uh, Ruben is asking, uh, is worship also prayer? Okay, very, very interesting. Yeah. So, uh, see, in worship, we praise God. We adore God. We, um, you know, we uh, express our reverence and our honor uh, to our God. And we make our spiritual sacrifices. As we go through this uh, course, we will observe that there are many different kinds of prayers. Okay, and in the kinds of prayers, there is one uh, set or category of prayer which is thanksgiving. And thanksgiving, I, I'm sure you you would uh, uh, agree with me, is also a form of worship, isn't it? So yes, you could say that there is an overlap as you're praying you know you you might also worship the lord because that is speaking to god right? you might say god you are so awesome you are merciful i thank you uh, you know you you have uh, gone before me you have rescued me from things that i could not understand you've brought me out of my difficult situation i praise you i honor you so i'm praying but there is worship which is a part of my prayer. So uh, we won't get too hard and fast and too technical uh, uh, about, you know, this is worship, this is prayer. But yes, there is an overlap. There can be an overlap and which is okay because ultimately we're just trying to relate to God, right? And we're just trying to uh, uh, strengthen our relationship with God. Yes, so there can be worship. Uh, worship is also prayer. You, you could say that. Okay, thanks, Abu Bekka. Happy to know that my explanation helps. Uh, <coughs> prayer is a part of worship. Okay, okay, Adesh. Same thing. Uh, prayer is a part of worship, or worship is prayer. There is an overlap, and and that's that should be okay, right? So, uh, yes, everyone. <coughs> this is our introductory class where we've talked about the purpose of prayer, uh, and uh, what I would encourage us to do is. Uh, continue to uh, jot down any thoughts or questions that you may have uh, even though the the class is over uh, you can post it on the stream page okay you can post it on if you have any questions you can post it on the stream page uh, and uh, you know i i can answer it for you on the stream page till we meet uh, next week for our class here okay so uh, yeah, if there are no more questions, I think uh, we are good to wrap up. Uh, is that okay, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Great. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless. So glad you joined us. Take care. God bless. God bless. Thank you. Bye for now. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, mom. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. God bless.